I'm going to teach you how to use the conditions of a reaction, enthalpy, entropy, and temperature, to predict whether or not the reaction is going to be spontaneous. Before we get started, I want to remind you in this equation, the temperature va uh, variable that we're using here is in units of Kelvin, which means that it is always a positive number. There are no negative numbers on the Kelvin temperature scale. That's going to be important as we work through some of these scenarios. Let's begin by considering a reaction that is exothermic, so delta H is negative, and it is increasing in entropy, so delta S is positive. Exothermic reactions tend to favor being spontaneous, and reactions that increase in entropy also tend to favor being spontaneous. Let's see how that works out for calculating delta G. Using the Gibbs free energy equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Let's plug in just some arbitrary values, numerical values for delta H and delta S, just to kind of make this math easier. Let's say that delta H is negative 10. And we don't know what our temperature is, so we're just gonna use the T variable there. And then let's say for delta S, let's say that it's also 10, so positive 10. So here we have negative 10 minus T times 10, which is just T times 10. And no matter what the value of temperature is, because again, temperature always has to be a positive number, no matter what the value of temperature is, this delta G number is going to work out to be a negative number, no matter what. So we can say that at any temperature, if we have negative delta H and positive delta S, delta G is going to be a negative number um, or less than zero which is consistent with a process being spontaneous. What about if we have the opposite condition? So we have an endothermic reaction that is decreasing in entropy. And let's plug that into the delta G equation again, and let's see what we get in that situation. So let's say that, um, let's use the same numbers again. Let's say our delta H is 10. In this case, it's plus 10 because it's endothermic. We don't know for sure what our temperature is. Our delta S is a negative 10. And let's do the math on this. We're gonna get 10 plus T times 10. No matter what the temperature is, because the temperature is always a positive number, no matter what, this is going to work out to be a positive number. So at any temperature, when we have a positive delta H and a negative delta S, delta G is a positive number and the process overall is non-spontaneous. So far, so good. Let's go back to our exothermic conditions and let's think about, we've already looked at negative delta H with a positive delta S. Let's look at negative delta H with a negative delta S, and what that might look like. So we're gonna plug in again to this equation, delta H minus T delta S. Let's keep, keep with the 10, number 10. That seems to be working well. So let's say our delta H is negative 10. We don't know what the temperature is, and delta S is negative 10. So this works out to be negative 10 plus T times 10. Now, is delta G in this situation, is delta G going to be a positive number or a negative number? The, the sign of delta G really depends on the value of temperature in this situation. Let me make some more room here. So it really depends on delta, on the value of T. Let's say that our temperature is one. If temperature was one, this would be negative 10 plus one times 10, which is, that was a bad choice. <laughs> Let's say that the temperature is two. If the temperature is two, negative 10 plus two times 10 is negative 10 plus 20, which is going to be a positive number. So if our temperature is two, delta G is going to be positive. What if we had something like if the temperature was one half? What would that look like? That would be negative 10 plus one half times 10. Negative 10 plus five, this would be a negative five. 
So if the temperature is one half, we get a delta G that is a negative number. So in this scenario where we have negative delta H and negative delta S, the sign of delta G depends on the size of the temperature. If we have a high temperature, then we end up with a positive delta G. If we have a low temperature, we end up with a negative delta G. So if we have a high temperature and the actual like magnitude of how high it needs to be, that's gonna depend on the values of H and S. If we have a high temperature, we said our delta G was a positive number, which is non-spontaneous. And so that was this situation right here where we had a temperature of two and it worked out to be a positive delta G. If we have a low temperature, then delta G worked out to be a negative number, which, was, which would be a spontaneous process. So let's also consider if we had positive delta H and positive delta S. And I'm going to erase this stuff to make some room for that calculation. So let's keep going with the tens. If we had positive 10 for delta H and we have positive 10 for delta S, what does that work out to be? Well, here we have 10 minus T times 10. And what does that give us for the sign of delta G? Well, again, it really depends on the size of the temperature. If the temperature is a really big number, then we're going to end up with a negative delta G. So let's say if the temperature was, let's do a real big number this time, like 10. If the temperature is 10, in this situation, we're going to end up with 10 minus 10 times 10, 10 minus 100. This will be a negative uh, 90 negative delta G. And let's consider if temperature was very low. So let's say this time, let's have a real low temperature, T equals 1 tenth. What would that be? Um, plugging 1 tenth in for the temperature to this equation right here. 10 minus 1 tenth of 10, 10 minus 1, that's a positive 9. So when our temperature is high, we ended up with a negative delta G. If temperature is high, delta G is negative. And if temperature is low, we, when we had temperature as one tenth, we ended up with a positive delta G. Negative delta G, spontaneous. Positive delta G, non-spontaneous.